with your parenting um, concerns uh, for your child, go um, and visit him here at Pantau Hospital Ampang. Hi, Dr. Go. Hi. Hi, good afternoon to all lovely mommies and handsome daddies. I'm Dr. Go. I'm a child <laughs> specialist that just joined Pantai Hospital Ampang. Uh, it's been a great honor to be a part of the community and I've been invited today to share my knowledge to everyone. Um, I believe that I understand that parenthood is not an easy thing. Even for myself as a child specialist, I encounter a lot of difficulties. But fortunately, with my experience as a pediatrician, I was able to incorporate my knowledge and experience in grooming my own child and I find it extremely useful. So I think it's my duty to educate everyone and at least to let you know the basic pediatric problems, the skin conditions of your newborn so that you know when to consult doctors and when not to. Yeah, thank you so much, doctor. Then I'll over to you the screen um, for you to share a little skin conditions in newborn. Thank you, doctor. All right. Thank you, Iman. All right. So yeah, let me share it. Okay. Uh, all right. Is everything all right? Can everyone hear me? Can anyone see this, the screen? Yeah, all right, that's good. So, all right, so yeah, as I mentioned before, I think um, I think skin condition in newborn, it's a very common thing and uh, I'm, I'm sure parents out there, you have encountered uh, situations where you do not know what kind of skin problem your child is having and not sure whether you should see a doctor or not. So let me guide you through um, what uh, what to do? So just a few uh, just a few index. Actually, I'm gonna talk. There are a lot of skin conditions in newborn, but uh, I've I have separated into those that you need to uh, be concerned and probably seek help from doctor, and those that are probably benign and you don't have to do anything. Just observe. All right. Okay. So the first one is called acutis mamorata. Uh, sounds a little bit like those Mexican or Spanish food, mamorata. But uh, basically it means, cutis means skin, mamorata means marble. So it's basic called, basically it's a, a marble-like skin. So you can see the marble here, and can you see this pattern? And sometimes we call it a lacy-like pattern. So what? So what is this? Is this something worrying? If you look, one look at it, you feel that, yeah, probably it's a bit concerning, but this is actually nothing to be worried about, okay? It's pro it's due to cold weather. So when there is cold weather, your blood vessels constrict, you get this kind of pattern. So what you need to do is just to keep the baby warm. So once it's warm up, this thing will disappear. But of course, in some of the condition, like Down syndrome, uh, Down syndrome child, it's a very common thing to see uh, this cutis palmarata, all right? So this is another picture. As you can see, there is a multiple marble-like -like kind of pattern, all right? So there's nothing to be worried about this, okay? Now, the next one is called Erythema Toxicum Neonatarum. It sounds very uh, hi-fi. It sounds very toxic and dangerous, but actually it's not. It's 100% totally fine, the babies. So it mean, Erythema means red, toxic, toxicum. Right, it, it looks very toxic. A neonatorum means newborn. So uh, the characteristic of this rash is that you can see blotches and patches of uh, red rashes with some small white curly papules. All right, it can it can be distributed uh, throughout the whole body. Okay, and uh, some also actually you know, uh, describe this as flea bitten rash. This is a flea. Um, it can be seen at uh, birth. And usually it will be gone by five to seven days. So generally there is no treatment needed. Okay, sometimes it can look a bit horrible like this, but there's nothing to be worried about it, all right? As you can see here, there are a bit of rashes here, 
over here, over here. I'm sure this one, 80% uh, and above of the kids have this kind of uh, skin rash. Okay, there is another one which is quite extensive here, but there is nothing to be worried about. All right, the next one is called neonatal acne. Um, basically, it looks the same like the acne of adults, but the only difference is that there are no comedons. Comedons means black head or white head. So it's why, why do we have this kind of neonatal acne? It's because of um, excessive androgen causing hyperactivation of our sebaceous gland. And it's usually transient. It can happen about three weeks and it takes about maybe two to three months to improve. It can be distributed over the face and the scalp. So do we have to be worried? Do we have to give any medication? The answer is no. All right. You just have to clean with uh, gentle soaps and water. Avoid using ointment. There is another condition in which we call uh, infantile acne. It looks the same, but this is a little bit different because uh, it, it, it's, it has comedons, all right? It means that they have uh, black heads or even white heads. So in this kind of infantile acne, which starts maybe about one month to about six months, you may need to use topical medications like benzoyl peroxides, the one that you use for your acne. So, uh, because it might leave a scar. Otherwise, for the infantile acne, um, it's usually self-resolving, uh, uh, self okay? So the next one is milia. I think most of the parents have seen this. Most of the babies have this. And the, photographs, the photographers love to take this kind of picture, okay? It's, uh, it's actually very cute, all right? It looks like pearly white uh, papules. And uh, I, I think the... Cantonese, they call it uh, uh, like, it looks like a rice seed, yeah? So some actually say that, oh, you need to prick it out, but um, don't have to do anything, okay? It's going to be, it, it will resolve within three to four weeks. It's basically because of uh, carotene and sebaceous materials and follicles. So nothing to worry about it. If your baby have it, take a picture, use your iPhone, snap it, and keep it from memory, okay? Yeah, sometimes it can be quite a lot. Yeah, but, well, that's baby skin. It's nice. It only happens in babies. All right, the next one is called Milar Miliaria Rubra. Wow, all the funny names here. Okay, it's a prickly heat or as you, know, you can just name it as heat rash. Okay, basically it's because of obstructed sweat glands. It is commonly seen in, um, in babies in our country, you know, tropical country where it's hot, babies sweat. Okay, so it's usually distributed over those uh, flexural areas like your neck, your armpits, uh, the chest, the back, sometimes even face. So what do you do? Avoid heat if necessary. If let's say your baby sweats, just give your baby a quick shower about maybe 30 seconds or one minute just to wash away the sweat. Should be fine. Okay, so frequent cleansing with gentle soaps. All right, some... As you can see, this one is over here, okay? All right. So the next one is seborrheic dermatitis. Uh, actually, a lot of babies have this condition. Uh, some call it a cradle cap. So what's the characteristic? It is. It looks like a greasy, flaky plaques over the scalps and, and sometimes over the ears. And uh, some kids do have it over the nappy areas. So why do we have this kind of uh, presentation? It's because of the overactivity of the, uh, our oil gland. And do you have to treat? The answer is yes and no. If you don't treat it, it usually clears up naturally about six to 12 months. But if you would like to uh, fasten this process, you can actually wash the scalp every day with a gentle mouth shampoo and gently brush it, uh, brush it with, uh, with scales, all right? Brush the scales away. Uh, some actually recommend using olive oil, but uh, it's actually not recommended because olive oil uh, can increase the risk of getting fungal infection. So what I'll do, I'll just recommend them to use uh, emollients, which is any kind of uh, uh, moisturizers, all right? And if it's severe enough, let's say it's uh, infected, they may even need topical uh, steroids or in, uh, antibiotic. All right, so this is another type. This is, a, this is mild. This one is more red, okay? So it looks very scaly and yellowish. 
All right, so who needs toilet toilet break? I suppose everyone's still with me. All right, not many words. It's all picture and just concentrate and listen to what I say. Okay. All right, the next one, strawberry nibai. Looks delicious. This is called a himanjoma. Uh, many kids have this. Different sizes, different colors, different shapes, different locations. So we classically describe them as like a strawberry. Okay, it's actually a group of abnormal blood vessels. Is it something to be worried about? It um, yes and no. Most of it is be, uh, most of the rush, uh, this lesion is benign. It happens about five to ten percent of child, and usually it grows with the child as they grow older to about one year old. Sometimes the the strawberry nibai actually act, becomes bigger, but then after that it regresses as the child grows older and older. Okay. So you have it over here. There's a huge one over the cheek, this one over the chest, and one over the head. All right. So do you have to be worried? It depends. There are many types. This, like the one that I showed earlier on, is a superficial type. It's located just above the skin. Yeah. And this one is deeper. We call it the deep hemangioma. And this one is mixed type. It means you have a deep, involvement and also a superficial involvement. So if you have this kind of hemangioma, I recommend please consult your doctor. Why? Because there is a possibility the, the blood vessels might actually invade the underlying organs. So it depends on the it depends on the location and the size. For example, if it's over the head and it's big, then we probably may need to do an ultrasound to make sure there are no abnormal blood vessels in the brain. And if like for this one, I may consider referring to an ophthalmologist as it's quite near to the eye. All right. And um, sometimes we do ultrasound liver and we do, sometimes we do find abnormal blood vessels in the liver. So when you're not sure, um, please consult your doctor and you have to monitor the size, uh, whether is it progressively increased and the location is it spreading. All right. And another thing to be, uh, Another thing to watch out is the complications. Sometimes this kind of hemangioma, they, if, uh, if, if you have friction, it may actually peel off. Like recently, one month, uh, a few months back, uh, I actually encountered one of the child with this strawberry knee bite over the cheek and it actually peeled off because of uh, uh, friction. And the bleeding was profuse. We have to pack the bleeding with adrenaline. And we even refer to uh, the dermatologist. So even though it's small, but we know that this is a highly vascularized uh, lesion, so you still have to be worried. Uh, still have to be uh, careful about it. All right. Now the next one, eczema. I would say that this is by far the commonest thing in our region. Um, the characteristic of eczema is it's red. It can be weepy. It means it looks a bit. Uh, watery and wet. Sometimes it's uh, scaly, it's dry, and it's usually over the cheeks. So eczema is a very interesting thing at, uh, as the location, the distribution of the rash depends on the age group. Like in babies, infants, it's usually seen over the cheeks. Whereas an uh, older child, it can be seen over the, uh, the cubital fossa, I mean here, and sometimes over the, the legs. All right, so it depends on the age and uh, and the dis distribution. So, but the treatment is about the same. Number one is keep your child uh, keep the child uh, moist the skin. So you use moisturizer or emollients, any kind of emollients. And sometimes they need topical steroids. And uh, one of the concern from parents is the usage of steroids. Um, I would say that if your house is on fire you have to put out the fire immediately. Do not let it spread. So you may be scared, may be afraid of topical steroids, but consult your doctor when it's needed, treat it aggressively, all right? If you don't treat it properly, once it becomes chronic, the, the skin becomes thicker, it will be very difficult to treat, all right? All right, this is another, uh, another few pictures. You see some, it looks very dry and red over the cheek. Okay, eczema has a 
eczema lesions has different characteristics. It depends on the age. Uh, it sometimes it looks just a little bit of redness. Sometimes it looks with uh, with papules with bumps. Um, sometimes it can be a uh, very flaky. All right. So the next one, this is quite common. Um, it's called sucking blisters. You, you see a little bit of blisters over the lips. Is this something worrying? No. Okay. This could be a sign of latching issues. So um, you must have proper latching. So if you're breastfeeding your child and you notice that uh, your, your child has very loud sucking sound, and uh, together with this kind of uh, sucking blisters, then you probably know that uh, you have to uh, try to adjust again and make sure that your baby latch properly. All right. And uh, another thing is that some parents, they might have a uh, herpetic, and herpetic uh, infection over their genitals and the kids may get this, but uh, it's absolutely very rare. I wouldn't say it, but just to tell you that this could be a sign of cold sores. So any treatment needed? No. All right, this is another one. Okay, this is quite interesting. It's not very common, but I've seen a lot. Uh, it's called sebaceous nevus, right? How does it look like? Usually, it's located over the scalp, the face, and if it's in the area of the lesion, there will be no hair. It's an area of baldness, and the appearance looks a little bit like like an orange skin. Okay, there is uh, like a dimpling, and we we often describe this as like waxy plaques. And what is this? This is actually an overgrowth of the outer layer of the skin, the epidermal layer. So, do we have to be worried about this? Again, the answer is yes and no. Usually, we don't have to do anything. We just monitor closely. But there is a risk, a very minor risk of secondary neoplasm means that it may actually turn into a cancerous uh, skin lesion like basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. But the risk is low. And uh, some people prefer to uh, uh, go for a surgical excision. So, so it depends. So what you have to do is just to monitor. If you're not sure, consult your uh, doctor. There are some of the pictures over here, over the scalp. It looks the same. Right? This is uh, over the skin, over the face, the cheek. As you can see, uh, it's like orange and a bit of dimpling. It's often raised and painless and not itchy. Okay. Okay. This is called congenital neonatal pustular melanosis a very long word uh basically congenital means uh, you are born with it neonatal means newborn pustular means pustules pustules are bumps which contains pus so at the nana didalam all right so basically they are born with multiple pustules all these yellowy yellowish pus filled uh, bumps all right is it common not really uh, it's less than one percent but we have seen quite a lot uh, it's usually generalized and it ruptures and, and become crusted like this within 48 hours. And is, does, does it need treatment? The answer is no. Actually, you do not need treatment. Okay, it will, even if without treatment, it will resolve by itself. But you may encounter situations where doctors will start antibiotic for it. Uh, it's, so it actually depends on the, the doctor's... Uh, confidence level and of course we need to make sure that your child doesn't have other risk of infection okay so uh, most of the time we may start antibiotic if it's extensive and we will check your white blood cell your inflammatory markers and even send bloods to check uh, for for blood uh, for, for for infection okay if everything's normal then we may consider the off it okay so sometimes it looks quite scary actually as you can see, there are multiple yellowish pustule lesions here. Uh, even doctors are worried when they see that. So, yeah, just to let you know, okay? Okay, this is stock bite. It's very common, extremely common. I'm sure if 10, 10 kids out there, maybe about 7 and above, will have this stock bite. We sometimes call them as salmon patch or we call angel's kiss. So it's, it resembles an angel kissing your baby's uh, forehead here. All right. Sometimes the rash can be over the eyelids. Okay. It's because of uh, stretch vessels. Vessels are dilated, stretch. So do we need to be worried about this? Answer is no. Okay. It's totally fine. 
right? This is some of the pictures. It's over here, the eyelid, and uh, some over the back of the neck. Okay, and it will usually some will stay on until the adulthood. Some will just uh, regress and uh, disappear. So nothing to be worried about it. All right, I'm sure this one everyone knows. Mongolian blue spots. Why is it called Mongolian blue spots? Because um, the, in I think in the 18th century there is a doctor who who treated a lot of Mongolian patients, and he actually found out that a lot of patients have this bluish discoloration over the back. Uh, there's nothing to be worried about this. Okay, totally fine. A lot of people have this. My child has it. Um, but sometimes people may uh, may uh, misunderstand this as uh, child abuse. All right. So yeah. So are you still with me? Okay, I do. I do like it. <laughs> all right. Just a few more, and you probably have to pay a bit more attention uh, for the next few slides. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is called petechiae. A petechiae is also known as a pinpoint rash. So it's like as if you take a pin and I poke your skin multiple times multiple areas all right so you have this kind of very tiny skin rash less than one millimeter do you have to be worried about this answer is yes 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 take this very seriously if it happens suddenly why because it often indicates that there is a problem with your platelet you know platelet is important to uh to, to stop bleeding if you have a cut over your hand the platelet is going to coagulate and it's going to stop the bleeding. So it can be seen in uh, in infections like dengue. Dengue, they have low platelet, so they often get this kind of uh, petit case. Some uh, platelet disorders like idiopathic thrombocytopic pleura, they have this kind of thing. So whenever you see this and it happens just suddenly, please come and see a doctor. Again, the characteristic is very tiny red spots very very tiny and multiple okay it's like taking a pin and poke your skin all right so remember this this is some of the picture again very tiny petty case all right these are a little bit larger all right so whenever you're not sure please consult the doctor okay okay um blisters if you have if your child your newborn um has blister please by all means go to see a doctor it is not normal at all this is a genetical disease it's called epidermolysis bullosa basically there's a problem with the outer layer of the skin and uh blisters are formed fluids are filled and after that it breaks the fluid out then um it uh it breaks all right so take this very seriously it's very rare but we have seen it i have seen it as well so this this kind of children will require neonatal ICU treatment completely in ICU, okay? Because this is what can happen if their blisters uh, breaks, uh, the, the raw area of their skin will be exposed. They may get dehydrated. They may get secondary bacterial infections. So they often need antibiotics and uh, hydrations, okay? Now, this is very common. It's called cafe au lait spots. Cafe au lait is a French word. It literally means cafe coffee with milk. I'm sure many of you out there, if you look at a mirror, you probably have one or two uh, cafe au lait spots. So do you have to be worried? Answer is yes and no. Okay. Usually no treatment is needed if your child has it. But what should you do? When should you consult your doctor is when it is very huge. It's very huge and it gets more and more, all right? If it's more than six cafe au lait spots and you have other symptoms, neurological psychiatric symptoms, so for example, they may have behavioral problem, they may have uh, uh, seizures, all right? They have uh, developmental milestone, uh, delay in development. So this is when you need to see a doctor, okay? Right. This is another one which is rather huge with irregular borders, but very well defined. So why do we so why do we need to be concerned? Um, I'm sure some of you have seen this kind of uh, picture before. Uh, multiple bumps. This is what we call neurofibromatosis. Okay, it's actually a genetic disease. It's inherited. Uh, they have they have a tumor of uh, the skin and the nervous systems. 
all right, means the nerve cells, all right. So this is what you call neural fibromas. So this kind of children, uh, at birth, they may have a few cartilage spots, but as they grow older, they may have more and more cartilage spots, and they may have all these small neural fibromas. Okay, so if you have a family history of neural fibromatosis and your child has it, uh, you probably have to consult a doctor. We probably may need to follow up further because it's associated with some other things like eye problem, brain tumors, and hypertension and uh, kidney problem. All right. Another one will be um, this condition we call as a McKeown Albright syndrome. It's also a genetical disease. It's um, endocrine, endocrine uh, logical disorders. It's something to do with your endocrine. Okay, it's huge. Some even describe it as a coast of Maine. So, what kind of problem do they have? They might have a bone overgrowth. They may have a swelling of the bone, and they may also have uh, what they call this precocious puberty. So. Even before reaching puberty, they might have signs of uh, signs and symptoms of secondary sexual characteristic. They may have axillary hair, they have body odor. Okay, so this is something to uh, be worried. You have to consult a doctor. The next one is pop wine stain. This is interesting. Uh, you, you see this kind of uh, very well defined uh, reddish pinkish rash distributed over one side of the face, all right? It's not common, but we have seen quite a lot, uh, less than 1%. It's because of enlarged blood vessels in the skin. And the, the blood vessels can also happen, uh, can, can turn uh, different in the brain as well. So the rash may grow with the patient. And it's often associated with this uh, neurological syndrome that we call a Sturge-Weber syndrome. So do we need to be concerned? Yes you need to be followed up under a pediatrician or a neurologist, okay? Why? Because it can be associated with eye problem, sometimes stroke. So another thing is why does it distribute it over one side of the body? Because it follows a nerve distribution. We have 12 nerves in our brain. The fifth one is called trigeminal nerve. It has three branches, V1, V2, and V3. So as you can see, this child is located over the eyelid and the cheek. So yeah, actually it's over this distribution, the V2. Whereas the first one is even larger, all right? So it, 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 uh, it's distributed over the mandibular region as well. This is consistent with all Sturge Weber children, okay? Now the last one will be uh, this. It's a giant congenital melanocytic nevi. Melanos, melanocytic means uh, black, black hyperpigmentation, black pigmentation of a skin lesion. Okay, uh, this is rare. Okay, this is rare. Uh, not common. I probably see one or two in my life, in my years of uh, experience in pediatric. Uh, do you have to be worried? Uh, yes, this kind of child needs to be followed up under pediatric dermatologist. Why? Because the risk of turning into a cancer is high. Okay, it can be a aggressive, okay, uh, aggressive skin cancer that we know as uh, melanoma. And this is also due to genetic mutations. All right, they can have the, the, the melanocytic cells that can actually invade the brain and the spine. So they may have seizures or some even have behavioral problems. So always consult the doctor. But I'm sure that if your baby is born with this condition, the doctor will definitely follow up your child. All right. Okay, so that's uh, all for my presentation. The take-home message is it's in, in our era of technology, with Facebook, YouTube, Google's, uh, uh, and now we even have webinars during our pandemic. So the, the way of learning is, has changed, okay? We can easily get information from everyone all over the world. So I think it's good for us to learn some basic newborn skin conditions, all right? I know parenting is it's difficult. Even for me, I feel it difficult sometimes. Don't stress out, all right? Uh, 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 doctors, even though we're pediatric doctors, but when we have our first child, we have difficulty as well because it only takes a parent to understand another parent's feeling, experience, all right? But of course, we may share our knowledge and you can use it to actually help you in grooming your child. So don't stress out. Parenthood is supposed to be fun, 
All right, so we can always share our knowledge together and make parenting a good and fun process. So lastly, I always say the more we know about our child, the better the parents we could be. So thank you for your kind attention. Hi, doctor. Hi. <laughs> thank you well, for a lot of mess. A, a lot, lot of message. Uh, a lot of questions. We do. We do. Yeah, a lot of questions um, as well. Um. Okay, but we're gonna take some questions. Uh, let me just put them on the screen. Sure. Sure. No problem. Okay. But I do. I thank you for the session because I thought. Uh, you know some of the things that you've shown, right? Like the cafe ole spots. Yep. The yep. melony. Um. Wait. Melanocytic. <laughs> Sorry. Melanocytic. Um, Melanocytic. Um. Spots, right? You would think those are birth spots and not yes, dangerous. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we've got one question here. Yep. Um. On the screen, doctor. So eczema, boleh menular ke? Can it spread? Okay, um, it, it, I wouldn't say spread. Mm -hmm. So eczema is commonly seen in children with a uh, family history of atopy, that means allergy. Okay. Um, it's a genetical disease. And um, I, I wouldn't say if you have one spot of eczema over here and the other spots will be normal. No, actually the whole body uh, has may turn eczema. Into eczema. Yes, okay. and eczema is just that whether uh, are there any trigger Right, whether you have frictions or certain infections going on, or it's it's usually distributed uh, to a certain location based on the age group. So, for example, in neonates, in babies, it's often the cheek, right? But when uh, they start to crawl, nine months old, twelve months old, they start to be more mobile. You will see the eczema over the elbow because okay. there's friction, yeah, and also the knee. Mm. And as and as they grow older. Uh, they are more active, they go for spots, so they sweat a lot. So yeah. like places like this kind of flexural areas, the neck, they will of they often have eczema. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So it's not just like a spread of eczema, it's just basically it's distributed uh differently compared um relative yes. to their age. Right? Okay. Yes, Thank correct, you, Doctor. Correct. Um correct. we've got another one here. Um, doctor, good afternoon. For prickly heat or heat rash, is it advisable to put baby powder, even the one with cornstarch? Thank okay, you. Um, personally, as a child specialist, I, uh, I, I wouldn't advise my patient to do that because um, if, let's say, you know prickly heat is because of uh, sweat. The sweat and the sweat glands are blocked. So, if you put powder, sometimes it may even block more follicles. So if it's blocked, then it's going to cause even more irritation. Uh, but yeah, it may cause irritation. So uh, from my experience, I do not, uh, but everyone has different opinions. So it depends on your confidence level towards any any uh, person. Mm -mm. All right. Yeah. So, okay, all right. Thank you for that. Because some people may... Um feel a bit hesitant with putting uh, powder on the baby, especially the face, right? It could cause suffocation, right? But then yes, for, correct, the, correct. for the skin one, doctor has just explained that it could block the sweat ducts. And, Perhaps there is one of yeah. the possibility. Mm -mm. Yeah, so always be careful if you want to use it. Uh, make sure it doesn't go, doesn't go into the, the eyes and uh, the baby, your baby do not inhale it. Mm -mm, okay. mm -mm. All right. So um, one, a few more questions perhaps? Doctor? All right, sure, sure, no problem. <laughs> okay, so I know skin got... problem is a very common thing, and um, everyone has headaches, all right. Even yeah. me, uh, my child has eczema. I had difficulty managing it, but with a uh, consultation from a dermatologist, pediatric dermatologist, I think it helped me a lot. So that also make me a better doctor as I was treating my child for three years, and it, it's it's good. I have uh, I have a great experience with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I think uh, it's yeah. one of uh, very concerning topics for parents. We've got another yeah. one from Liz Baby Chi. Doctor, normally mm -hmm. how long does it take for baby acne on the face to go away? Yep. So like I say, if it's a neonatal acne, um, it may last up to three months. But if it's if it happens later on during the infantile period, means that probably maybe one month to 12 months. 
months, it may take a bit longer. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just uh, sometimes you may need to put these benzoyl peroxides. Yeah. Um, that's okay, right? To put on the face as well and everything. Or does it have to be certain uh, medicated brands or prescription prescripted um, peroxide? Uh, <laughs> oh, that one. Okay. Uh, uh, you probably have to ask the child's oh, specialist first. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. don't simply go to the over counter. Don't simply buy anything from over counter. You probably okay. have to ask first. It must be safe for children. As you know, uh, as a child specialist, we do we try not to give patients medications unnecessarily. If it's uh, self healing, we know it's it's nothing to be worried about. It we usually. Um, we usually advise not to use any products. Mm-mm. However, it's always good to use uh, gentle soaps to clean. That's fine. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because baby yeah. skin is very, very sensitive, right? Okay. Yeah. One more question. Sorry. Okay, um, sure, no problem. <laughs> so, uh, by Norcia, nervous? Is it hurt or is it itchy? I think you've spoken okay. about a few mm-hmm. nevi, right? Types of nevi. Okay, uh, basically the definition of nevus means any skin lesions, anything on the skin that is not normal. We call it a nevus. Usually, it's a flat, a uh, patch. It could be of different colors. So uh, it depends on what are you talking about. So if it's like cafe ole spots, there is no you. You don't feel anything. Okay, it's not itchy. Uh, strawberry nevi. Some patients do say that it's a little bit itchy. They might scratch it. Uh, yeah, so so it depends. Like uh, mo mo is also another kind of uh, nevus. It's called oh. melanocytic nevus. It's a hyperpigmented skin lesions, right? So we have okay. a lot of medical terms, uh, but actually it's it's quite simple. <laughs> yeah, you just you it's just, just have lesion to know on the, the skin. Meaning. Yeah, it's, a nevus means a, a lesion in a, on the skin. Yeah. yeah. So different types yeah. would um, present themselves differently. So would there be any nevus that hurts or? cause itchiness to the skin? Um, nevus that will hurt and cause itchiness to the skin. Uh, not, not, not really. Uh, eh? Offhand, I can't think of any. Okay. But usually, if it's, if it's infected uh, or with some fungal infection or bacterial infection, yes, it might be, uh, it might be hurting and uh, itchy. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so at the moment, that is all that we have for the Q&A. So um, we'll definitely answer your questions later on in the comments below. So do keep them in, uh, keep sending them in. Uh, just to summarize, Dr. Go's sharing, very, very detailed, very, um, is very useful, I would say. And you can also watch the live again to see the conditions, the skin conditions for your reference, right? So if you do find any of the pictures, your children, I hope not the more dangerous ones, but um, if you do find it, please do um, uh, the ones that need, need treatment, please do see a pediatrician at least, or uh, like doctor said, consult a pediatrician, a pediatrics, dermatologist can help as well. But if anything, also go to your GP so that they can advise you uh, for the correct treatment as well. But anyway, thank you, Dr. Go, for your very, very um, informative session. And right, thank, you. thank you for thank, thank you for the time. Thanks, yeah. everyone. I hope I hope uh, at least everyone will remember fifty percent of what I say. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I tried to put something. I tried to put some pictures so that you can remember. Oh, this one looks like an orange. Oh, this one is using a pin to print your, print your body. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like always try to make one. it simple and easy for everyone to remember. Yeah. I believe so too. I think that was quite um very, in your eyes kind of pictures. Uh, you would relate to it if you see it. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Dr. Go, and thank you to the Elmo behind you as well oh. <laughs> <laughs> for being featured okay. in. But yeah, I'll see you. Um, we'll see you when we see you. And um, that is all from Dr. Go for today. All right. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your support. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something Bye. today. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs>